Welcome, welcome, welcome to SEIR 523. Um, today is your first day. Uh, you're beginning your journey into uh, becoming software engineers, and we are here to guide you through that process. Um, all of these lectures, uh, the, not only the slideshow that we're going through now, but everything that we do in class will be recorded and put on the class YouTube channel, um, just so you can see what that looks like. It in Notion, uh, which I'm not sure how familiar all of you are with yet, but we're going to be using this all the time in class. Uh, you can see my screen, right? See this little Notion? Yes. Somebody give me a thumbs up. Okay, perfect. Um, we're going to go more into depth about how Notion works a little bit later today, but all of the lecture recordings uh, can be found by clicking here. That'll take you to my YouTube playlist where all of the lecture recordings for this cohort and every cohort that uh, this group of instructors has taught uh, lives. So you can look up previous lectures from those cohorts as well. Um, but let's get things going here. Um, we are going to be going over a lot of information today. Uh, it's kind of how orientation goes. We've got to talk about the you know, classroom culture and what the course is going to be like and things like that. Um, so don't feel like you have to take notes. Please don't take notes on this. Uh, we are going to give you all of this. You technically already have access to all of this in Notion if you want to follow along. Um, and as with most, th most things in this course, we do not expect you to pick everything up immediately. Um, there's going to be a learning curve. Uh, don't worry about that. If something doesn't stick, we'll talk about you know, ways to kind of mitigate that as, uh, as time goes on. Um, before we do anything else, we're going to kind of do another introduction. I'd like each of the uh, members of our instructional team as well, well, all of the members of our instructional team to um, just kind of tell them, tell you all a little bit about themselves. Uh, I will start. Uh, my name is Ben Manley, he, him pronouns. Uh, I am a huge Raspberry Pi and Internet of Things enthusiast. I love that. I love those little microcontrollers and things like that and doing fun stuff with them. Um, I spent uh, prior to uh, software engineering, I spent about 17 years of my career in uh, multi-unit restaurant management uh, and doing kind of software solutions for them uh, towards the tail end of that. And one of the things I did was set up little sensors and all the coolers to like give me phone call notifications and text messages when things got too warm or too cold. And um, that's kind of when I realized that I was in the wrong field because I enjoyed that a whole lot more than... Uh, watching people make sandwiches and running restaurants. So um, I love to travel. Uh, my wife is a program manager for Expedia. She's been with them for a while now. Um, we've been all over the place and probably have a ton more places to go. So we love to travel. I hate horses. It's, it's just like a running joke. I know it just ended up on a slide here, but you're going to see all sorts of weird horse references. I very, their necks creep me the fuck out. I do not like horses. So um, but I do love most animals. I've got two dogs, two cats. I've got a 15 year old, uh, terrier mix, border collie mix. And we got a little puppy mutt a couple of years ago, right when the pandemic started named Ruby. And she is a wonderful little fireball of chaos. Um, and we've also got two cats. And another fun thing about me is I just started, uh, as a dungeon master for a D and D campaign. So, I'm just now kind of getting into that. And I've got so many pieces of crap around the house now because of that. So there's an ever-growing pile of toys to, to play D&D with friends. So uh, I will pass things on to David, your other lead instructor. Hi, everyone. I am David Stinson. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. Uh, I am your other instructor lead uh, besides Ben. Uh, I am an open source enthusiast. Uh, before I did this, I kind of had a background in uh, day trading and uh, as going through that process kind of, um, you know, became a spreadsheet whiz and uh, started on a bunch of Excel programming and uh, all that kind of was similar to Ben was like, oh, wow, I'm having a lot of fun doing this, like, you know, Excel business and not really looking at stocks all day and uh, being stressed out all the time and, you know, managing financials and terrible, terrible things like that. Um, so kind of got into programming a little bit more from there uh, and 
kind of, you know, ended up where uh, we all are today and uh, kind of along the way, got really involved in uh, the open source world and uh, a contributor on uh, multiple open source GitHub repos, all that stuff. So uh, that's kind of my programming background. Uh, I am also a dog parent. Uh, I'm sure you'll see little Liam running around here sometime, uh, or at least hear him. <laughs> he can be a little loud sometimes, uh, but uh, he's under control for the most part. <laughs> uh, I am also a uh, dungeon master as well, although I am kind of a, a player currently in the campaign that Ben is running. So uh, that's uh, love D and D. So if you also love D and D, I'm sure we'll have a ton to talk about. And uh, I also, uh, even though I am using a Mac for this cohort, uh, I also love uh, WSL2 and Windows and uh, Linux and all of that stuff. Uh, I am responsible for most of that install fest content that you all did, uh, hopefully over this last weekend. Uh, so uh, any install fest stuff, I'm your guy. Um, I will pass it off to Hunter. Morning, everybody. My name is Hunter Long, he, him. Um, I'll be one of your instructional associates. A little bit, bit about me. Um, big fan of React, which is a JavaScript library you guys will be learning in Unit 3. Um, before coming to GA, I worked as a graphic designer, did a lot of work in UI, UX. So hopefully I can give you some tips on making your projects look professional and things like that. Um, and most importantly, I am neutral on horses. No opinion on horses. Um, I guess I'll pass it off to Ian. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Ian. Uh, he, him pronouns. Um, I, I hate going after Hunter because we always have like the same information sort of on slides and I always end up having to kind of vamp about other stuff. But yeah, um, I'm based in Seattle, Washington. Um, I'm another one of the IAs. Um, yeah, I similarly I'm a huge like react nerd I love JavaScript and react I love debugging stuff so I'm sure we'll see lots of each other um, and you'll <laughs> you'll get to find that out um, I'm a big fan of uh, I say snob but I'm a big fan of like and really any coffee and, and matcha so if you have suggestions please let me know if you have a favorite um, I'm always looking for new stuff um, similarly I think horses are fine I don't really have any strong feelings either way but I am glad that this horse joke is sort of continuing on into another cohort I'm very excited about that so um, yeah, I think that's it. I'll pass it off to Joe, but yeah. Good morning, everybody. My name's Joe, he, him. Uh, I am the official sea lion wearer. Uh, I love animals. Uh, They're awesome. Um, I have a couple dogs myself and grown children, which are children as well, and animals and uh, I am the 1979 Pong champion. Uh, I don't know if you all remember that game. Uh, I was around when it came out. Um, now that is, of course, the self-titled. Um, I will. I took this course a couple years ago after a uh, very long, about 30-year career in uh, automotive. I was a mechanic. Um, decided that I absolutely love uh, computers, and I actually wrote my first program back in 1983 uh, in BASIC, um, and then finally came to my senses a couple years ago and joined this cohort, and so I did what y'all are going through now. Uh, I will say horses are only good for horsepower. Um, I think that, yes, horsepower is great, but I know that you can actually convert horsepower to other type of power if you find a certain website online so you can find out how many snail power your car is uh, it's a fun little thing to do uh, i am also the uh, zoom background self-proclaimed king i absolutely love um <laughs> i love changing my background so you'll see quite a few of those and yes Sea lions have teeth, um, and the average sea lion that you see can have up to 100 command. They're actually very smart. They're just as smart as dogs, so just a little known fact. Um, I will go ahead and pass it on to, who are we going to? Uh, Jackson. Awesome. Thank you, Joe. 
Hi, I'm Jackson Reeves, he, him. I live in Atlanta, Georgia, so I'm on the East Coast, synced up with all your normal time zones. I'm a fan of TypeScript, big fan of testing, which you'll learn a little bit about at that. Um, I love Agatha Christie novels. I've managed to read all of them. There are more than 60. Uh, and I am an obsessive watcher of Star Wars movies. Similar to Joe, I completed the General Assembly cohort like a year and a half ago. Prior to that, my background was alternatively in journalism and the education sphere. And currently I work as a consultant uh, full time. So I TA in my off hours. But yeah, I work as a software consultant. And I will be one of the TAs that you'll meet hopefully tonight if you show up for office hours. Uh, we'll go over that a little bit more, but I can pass it on to Emily, my fellow TA. Hi, I'm Emily, uh, she, her. Um, I'm also an SEI graduate, a graduate. I graduated two cohorts ago. Um, I love horses. I think they're majestic animals that are very strong and powerful. Um, if you could only see the amount of horse stuff I have. Uh, I have a dog. She's an old dog, an old grumpy dog. So if you hear her barking, like, just let me know. <laughs> um, she, let's see, I'm a wireframe enthusiast, as you know, I said this in orientation. Um, I think wireframing is probably going to be something really useful for most of you. Um, I think that planning ahead is just going to be something that you guys are going to need to know and use, just use appropriately. Don't go too over the top, but I think if you plan the right way, you'll get really far in this cohort. That is great advice. Um, Jackson, if you would talk a little bit about what the TA program looks like and what, well, you can just kind of go over this slide. Sure. Sounds great. All right. So for evening and weekend office hours. All right. So what are office hours? If you're struggling in class and you need to go over anything, or if you run into the homework and you're having any trouble, or if you need debugging with anything, or just for whatever reason you want to hang out with us or anyone else in your cohort after hours, that is what office hours are for. So we can help groups of students together if they all happen to be working on the same problem. Uh, we can give you one-on-one -on -one help if needed, and we'll have breakout rooms open. So you can jump in there with a group if you want, or just go in there if you want some quiet space. Um, but still with the opportunity to be plugged in with us. If you end up in a breakout room and you run into an obstacle, just come back into the main room and let us know and we will help you out with it. The big question is, when does this happen? Okay, so it'll be Monday through Thursday and also Sunday. So nothing Friday or Saturday. Monday through Thursday, it's gonna be 5.30 to 8 p.m. EST. And then Sunday, it's going to be 12 to 2.30 p.m. EST. And that'll be every Monday through Thursday and Sunday, with the exception of holidays, um, which I believe have been discussed at one point or another. I think we have one. We'll go over them again. Up. Awesome. Yay. And we have Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> so one will be coming up on Monday. So that will be a day when we do not have um, those. But FYI, when holiday weekends do happen, we do still have office hours on Sundays. Um, so like for this Sunday, we will still be having office hours. And in terms of how to join, I will post a link to office hours. It's going to use the exact same Zoom link that your normal class cohort uh, meets in, AKA this Zoom link, but I'll always post one in the classroom channel before office hours begin. So you can just click the link to join. You don't need to sign up or anything and you don't need to wait to be admitted. You'll just be let in immediately. 
Um, <clears throat> if a lot of you end up joining at the same time, sometimes students just want to kind of co-work or see what everyone else is working on. They don't necessarily have a pressing question. If you do come in and you have a pressing question, we just ask that you raise your hand. Um, you can do that. I remember, you'll probably go over this a little bit further. I remember when I first heard raise your hand, I would just do this. That's not what we mean when we mean raise your hand. We mean this wonderful little thing, um, which is a Zoom reaction. So I'm sure you'll probably run into even more of that, but that is what we recommend you do. If you need a specific, uh, need help with a specific issue and you're worried that we might not be aware or noticing, um, we try to keep that to a minimum, obviously. And we try to handle it in a somewhat cute approach. So obviously first one in will be the first one handled. And yeah, that's, that's mostly our general approach, but I look forward to meeting y'all hopefully in a little bit more detail tonight and throughout the rest of the week as homework starts to ramp up and get a little bit tricky. And yeah, uh, let me know if you need anything and looking forward to working with y'all. Thank you, Jackson. Um, just as a side note, Jackson and Emily are both absolutely phenomenal. Um, we had, uh, Emily was part of our instructional team last cohort and Jackson was uh, uh, the TA for us last cohort. And um, I cannot sing their praises enough. They're both absolutely awesome at what they do. And you should definitely go and, and uh, hang out in TA office hours because you will learn a lot. So thank you. Um, we're going to do a quick little icebreaker with everybody here. Uh, I have your names alphabetized by first name. Uh, so I'm going to call off your first name, and if there are multiple people with the first name, I'll call out your last initial. Uh, what I'd love for you to do is go ahead and give us your preferred name um, uh, so that we can learn how to pronounce it appropriately and let us know what your pronouns are, what metro area you're in, and what your favorite flavor of ice cream is. Usually we have a little bit more of a thinker here, but with 56 students, it's, we've got to kind of get through everybody. So flavor flavor of ice cream is where we started so uh again i'll as an example uh i am ben manley um my preferred pronouns are he him i am in the austin ish metro area in texas i actually live on lake travis and uh jonestown but close enough to austin and my favorite flavor of ice cream is chocolate chip cookie dough so first up on the list we have Abu Bakr. And if I pronounce your name wrong, just let me know. Abu Bakr, are you here? Does your mic work? Can you hear me? Hey, there we go. My name is Abu Bakar Bakayoko. You can call me Abu. My preferred pronoun is he, him, is. I live in New York in the Bronx. My favorite flavor of ice cream is chocolate. Awesome. Up next, we've got uh, Alexandria. Hey, my name is Alexandria. Um, she, her. Uh, I live near Atlanta, Georgia, and my favorite ice cream is strawberry. Awesome. Andy, you're up next. Hi, everyone. I'm Andy. I go by he, him. I live near Boston, Massachusetts, and my favorite ice cream is Crunchosaurus. Crunchosaurus. What is that? It's some, like, blue dyed vanilla with, like, chocolate waffle bits inside i'm intrigued i'm gonna have to look that up i might i might have a new favorite ice cream after i eat that it's so wonderful awesome thank you uh arnav hello everyone my name is arnav you can call me aj my preferred pronouns are he him i'm taking this course from qatar which is in the middle east so it's currently 4 25 p.m 
And my favorite flavor of ice cream is cookies and cream. Thank you. Austin? Does not look like we have Austin on the list here. So we're going to skip him. Uh, Beryl, you're up next. Hi guys, I'm Beryl. Uh, that is also my preferred name. My pronouns are she, her. I'm in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, and my favorite flavor of ice cream is plain peppermint. Although I do like mint chocolate chip. There's something very pure about just peppermint. And that's my kitten who you might hear at some point. Oh, it sounds so little. Can we see it? Can we see the cat? Yeah, she's actually, I have two. This is Lily. Oh. She's like a year, eight months old. And then I also have Appa. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Uh, we have two Brian's in the class. So Brian D, if you'd like to go first. Yeah, how's it going? I'm Brian Dela Cruz. Um, my preferred pronouns are he, him. I'm actually in the New York City area, and my favorite flavor of ice cream is also cookies and cream. Cool. And uh, Brian M. Hello, everyone. My name is also Brian. Uh, preferred pronouns he, him, his. Uh, from Austin, Texas currently, and favorite ice cream is Mexican vanilla. If y'all know where Amy's ice cream is, that's the best ice cream place to go to here. Have you been to Lick in Austin? Uh, Lick's okay, but they have really weird flavors. Yeah, they do. Through, yeah. Texas dewberry and corn, that is, that's some legit ice cream. I think they had spicy, stuff. spicy ice cream at one point in time. And I was like, Ooh, I'm not adventurous to try that. Yeah, it was, it was good. It, it was, I think it was strawberry and jalapeno or something like that. Oh, so good. A little bit of balsamic vinegar on there. Good stuff. Awesome. Uh, sweet. Uh, thank you for introducing yourself, Christopher. Doesn't look like Christopher is on my list here. Skip him and go to Cindy. Hi, my name is Cindy. My preferred pronouns are she, her. I'm from Houston, Texas. Uh, my favorite flavor of ice cream is strawberry. Awesome. Thank you. And Coco. Hi, my name is Coco. My preferred pronouns are she, her. I'm um, in the New York City area, and my favorite ice cream flavor is vanilla. Awesome. Hard to go wrong with a good vanilla. Dahlia? Hi, my name is Dahlia. Um, my pronouns are she, her. Um, I live in Austin, Texas, and my favorite ice cream is buttered pecan. Awesome. I think Chris is back. So, Chris, if you want to introduce yourself. Maybe. Oh, no, no, Chris is gone again. Chris may be having Zoom problems. He's probably using a Linux. Um, Dane, you're up next. Hi, guys. Uh, Dane Xavier is my preferred name. Um, pronouns would be he, him. I'm currently in Miami, Florida. Uh, favorite ice cream would be um, ben and Jerry's half baked, and I usually eat the entire pint in one sitting. <laughs> David, uh, <clears throat> uh, my name is David. I preferred pronouns are he him. I'm in the Atlanta area, and my favorite flavor of ice cream is Moose Track. That's, that's good stuff. Dylan. Hey guys, I'm Dylan. Uh, my preferred pronouns are he, him. Uh, I'm outside of the Raleigh metro area. And uh, my favorite flavor of ice cream would probably be cookie dough. Ice choice. Eduardo. Hey, morning. Uh, I usually go by Eddie. Uh, preferred pronouns are he, him. Uh, I live in Miami 
and not super picky with ice cream, but let's go with salted caramel. Elijah? Hello, my preferred name is Elijah, and then my pronouns are just he, him, and I live about an hour outside of Chicago. If I had to go with a favorite uh, ice cream, it would probably be Trader Joe's cookie butter ice cream. Cool. Just curiously, where you said an hour outside of Chicago, whereabouts are you? Uh, between uh, Chicago and Rockford, so okay. uh, west. Cool. Emily? Hi, my name's Emily. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. Um, I live in the northern Houston area, and my favorite flavor of ice cream is probably cookie dough, but I'm impartial and I will eat all of them. So. Cool. Good position to have with ice cream. I like that. Eric? doesn't look like Eric's on the list, but it looks like Chris is back with us. Chris, you want to give it another whack? Hey, how's it going? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, yeah. So, uh, so I was trying to use my my uh, computer mic, but for some reason it's not working, so I caught it on my phone. But my preferred name is Chris. Um, my pronouns are he, him. I'm in a suburb of Pittsburgh, and my favorite ice cream is cookies and cream. Excellent. Uh, Eric? Mm, looks like Eric's going in and out on Zoom. So if one of you instructors wants to try to touch base with him, that'd be great. Uh, Francisco? Hi. My number is Francisco. Um, Frank is fine for me. My preferred pronoun is he and him. I live in Georgia, and my favorite ice cream is caramel, salt caramel. Thank you. Uh, Haiti? Hi, my name is Haiti. Um, I always like to say that it's pronounced like the country because I'll have people pronounce my name back wrong to me always. Uh, uh, my preferred pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm in the Bay Area in San Francisco, actually. And my favorite ice cream is also sea salt caramel. Excellent. Are you our first West Coaster? Have we had anybody else yet on the I West Coast? I think we have someone else, but okay. yeah, I'm, an, I'm an, a morning person, so this is not a problem. Cool. Uh, Jake. Oh, wait a minute. No, we have Ileana next. Sorry. Hello, my preferred name is Ileana. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. I'm near Fort Worth and my favorite flavor of ice cream is Rocky Road. Awesome. Next up, we've got Jake. Hey there, my name is Jake, uh, he, him. I am in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And favorite ice cream would definitely just be some plain vanilla. Goes great with some toppings. Cool. Uh, got Jaime up next. Jaime, are you there? Going to unmute. Jaime, are you able to unmute? There we go. Hello, my name is Jimmy. My prefer uh, he or him. I live in Westfield, New Jersey, and I don't have any favorite ice cream. Okay. Jesse? What's up, guys? I'm Jesse. Um, my preferred pronouns are he, him. I live in St. Louis, Missouri, 
Um, and I would say my favorite flavor of ice cream would be peach uh, with, with chocolate being probably second choice. Nice. We have two Johns and a Jonathan. So we're going to start with John H. Hi, good morning. My name is John. Uh, preferred pronouns are he, him. I live in Austin and my favorite flavor of ice cream is also Mexican vanilla. Very nice. John Z. Hey, <clears throat> uh, my name's uh, John. Uh, my preferred pronouns are he, him. Uh, I live in Long Island, New York. And my favorite flavor of ice cream is pistachio. Ooh, good. I like a good pistachio gelato. It's good stuff. Uh, Jonathan. Uh, what's up, everyone? Um, Jonathan, uh, he, him. I live in the uh, Vienna, Virginia area. Uh, favorite ice cream is probably cookie dough. Cool. Jordan. Hi, my name is Jordan. Um, my preferred pronouns are she, her. Uh, I'm from the Boston area, and my favorite ice cream flavor is pistachio as well. <laughs> nice. Um, Juan? How's it going? Uh, Juan for pronouns he, they. I'm based near uh, New Brunswick, New Jersey, and favorite ice cream is Ben and Jerry's Cookies and Cream, but the dairy free version. Nice. Uh, Kailana? Hi, I'm Kailana. Um, my preferred pronouns are she, her. I'm from Galveston, Texas, and my favorite flavor of ice cream is Kailan. I mean, I'm sorry, it's chocolate. Cool. Uh, Cairo? Hey, I'm Cairo. Uh, I'm from New York City. My pronouns are he and him. And my favorite uh, ice cream is uh, Dulce de Leche. Ooh, good choice. Uh, Kathleen, I believe you go by Kathy, though, correct? Hi, I'm Kathy. I'm, uh, I go by she, her, and I live in Bloomington Normal, Illinois. So if you guys watch American Idol, Leah Marlene, her hometown. Um, and I like mint chip ice cream, but I like them all too. Awesome. Kevin. Hello. Uh, my name's Kevin. Um, preferred pronouns are he, him. I live around the Atlanta, Georgia area. And my favorite flavor of ice cream is vanilla. Awesome. Up next, we've got Landry. Hi everyone, my name is Landry, um, he and him. I live in the Baltimore metro area in Maryland. And uh, my favorite flavor of ice cream is uh, mocha and peanut butter. Mm. Up next, we've got Matthew. Hey, my name is Matthew, he, him. I'm from the Tampa, Florida area and my favorite uh, ice cream is mint chocolate. Awesome. Mauricio? Hello. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Perfect. Uh, so yeah, Mauricio. I prefer to go by Mauricio if you like, or Mao. Um, my pronouns would be he, him. I'm in the Miami, Florida area. And uh, as far as ice cream goes, just about anything but mint if it's dairy-free. So yeah. Cool. Uh, Micah? Hello. Uh, my name is Micah. My preferred pronouns are he, him. I live in the Baltimore area as well. And my favorite flavor of ice cream is uh, key lime pie from Brewster's. Ooh, that sounds delicious. We shouldn't have started off with the food question. I'm getting hungry already. Um, we have two Michaels. So Michael C., if you'd like to go first. Yeah, I'm, excuse me. Good morning. I'm Michael. I'm there. We go. That'll work better. He, him, his. I'm the Greater Denver area, and just chocolate for right now. Cool, Michael L. Yeah, uh, my name is Michael as well. Uh, my preferred pronouns are he, him. Um, I'm out in San Diego, and my favorite ice cream flavor is strawberry. 
Uh, Minji? Hi, I'm Minji. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. I live in LA, California. And my favorite flavor of ice cream will be mint chip. Cool. Got a lot of mint chip fans. Cool. Natasha? Hi, I'm Natasha. I go by Tosh. Um, preferred pronouns are she, her. I live in the Pittsburgh area. And my favorite flavor of ice cream would be Moose Tracks. Cool. Nathan? Hi, I'm Nathan. Uh, pronouns are he, him. I'm in Des Moines, Iowa. And favorite ice cream is uh, Ben and Jerry's Fish Food. Awesome. I don't know that we've ever had a student from Iowa. Have we, David? I know I have. Oh, I don't think I have. That's fun. Cool. Uh, Nicholas. Hi, uh, I'm Nick. Um, my pronouns are he and him. I live in Houston, Texas, and favorite flavor of ice cream is pistachio. Awesome. Omar? Uh, yeah. Hey, um, Omar. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. Uh, I live in Auburn, Maine. And uh, favorite ice cream has to be vanilla. Awesome. Oh, Maine is so beautiful. We went there on a vacation a couple of years ago. It's one of the one of the better vacations we've been on. Uh, Patrick. Hi, my name is Patrick. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. I'm in Houston, Texas, and my favorite flavor of ice cream is uh, Bluebell's um, Dutch chocolate. Cool. My wife really likes that ice cream, too. Pierce. Hi, I'm Pierce. Uh, pronouns he, him. Uh, I live uh, right outside of New Orleans, and uh, my favorite ice cream is the Tabasco uh, flavor. So you can only get in one place where they make Tabasco at, but it's good. Sounds bad, but it's pretty good. Really? Yeah. That's, I'm going to add that to the list with the blue waffle surprise ice cream. That sounds fascinating. They actually make two different types, so they're both good. Cool. I'm, I'm going to look into that. Rachel. Hi, my name's Rachel. Pronouns are she, her. I'm in the Bay Area, too, except I'm North Bay, Sonoma County. And we have a shop here that does really good lavender ice cream. Nice. That bougie ice cream place in Texas that I was talking about in Austin, they do like a lavender or something. I think it's like a lavender lemon cookie ice cream. That's actually really good. So I yeah, smell it. You do a lot of stuff with lavender. Yeah, it's good stuff. Awesome. Rob? Hey, I'm Rob. Uh, he, him. I'm from Elmira Corning, New York, which is kind of central upstate. And my favorite ice cream is Hagen Dot strawberry. Cool. Hey, off. Morning, guys. My hey, off. Uh, he's him. Just moved from Thailand to Colorado, and um, coffee. I like coffee ice cream. Awesome. Ryan. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm Ryan. Uh, preferred pronouns are he, him. Uh, I live in the metro Atlanta area. And uh, favorite ice cream would be birthday cake. Ooh, that's fun. That's wacky. I like it. Sammy? Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Sammy. Uh, my preferred pronouns are he, him. Right now, I'm taking this course from Jordan. It's located in, like, in the Middle East. And my favorite flavor of ice cream has got to be vanilla. Awesome. Um, is it Savine? Uh, Savian. Close. Savian. Okay. <laughs> um, well, most people just call me Savvy, um, just because it's easier. Uh, Savvy, um, my fur pronouns are she, her. Uh, I am from Maryland, and I recently moved to New Jersey. So I left the DMV for the Tri-State. Um, and my favorite flavor of ice cream is well, one other person, which is butter pecan. So shout out to the one person that's ever butter pecan. Um, but yeah, butter pecan awesome. my favorite. Thank you. Scott? 
Uh, hey everyone, I'm Scott, uh, he, him, um, hour north of Atlanta, and for ice cream, Friendly's via the Mocha Chunk. Oh, I've been to a Friendly's in forever, they don't have those around here. That's good. Uh, Theron? Yep, my name is Theron, he, him, uh, I live in Birmingham, Alabama, and I'd say peppermint, but most anything except uh, Neapolitan ice cream. Awesome. And last but not least, Zachary. Hello, everyone. My name is Zach, he, him pronouns. I live in the Northern Virginia, DC metro area. And my favorite flavor of ice cream is peanut butter. Excellent. Well, it's nice to meet all of you. We're going to have so much fun over the next 12 weeks. Um, Let's go ahead and keep that. Let's, what uh, ice cream flavors do the rest of the instructors like? David, what do you like? Oh, you're, you're putting me on the spot. Um, uh, I like um, whichever one is the Stephen Colbert. Um, Amer American Dream. Um, yeah, American say, Dream. Yeah. That's, that's the best. Cool. Hunter? Uh, mint chocolate chip. But if we're going like brand specific, that late night snack. That Ben and Jerry's does is pretty good. Nice. Yeah. Ian? Yeah, I'm also a mint chocolate chip gang, but I will say uh, Cherry Garcia is a sort of niche favorite that no one mentioned, so I have to put it out there. That's also great. Nice. There's always one for Cherry Garcia. It's Joe? Me. <laughs> Tin Roof Sunday. Tell me more. Uh, it's a vanilla with a uh, fudge swirl with chocolate covered peanuts. Ooh, that's, that's fun. It's wacky. I like it. Jackson, are you still around? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I am a big fan of Talenti as a brand, and they have this really great cookies and cream layer thing, which like you can't scoop it out. It's vertically oriented. So you like just end up eating the entire pint in one sitting and it's delicious. They make excellent gelato. So it's, yeah. it's, I mean, for what you can buy store-bought gelato, it's pretty good stuff. So. Cool. Emily? Uh, ben and Jerry's Chunky Monkey. Nice. You're very adamant about that answer. I like it. <laughs> Did I miss anybody? Is there anybody here that I didn't call? Okay. And did Austin show up? Doesn't look like we still have Austin. Okay. James. Uh, I do not have you on my list, so let me go ahead and get that. Yeah, I and... might have joined late, so I'm not sure if I'd show up on a roster or not. Okay, well, let's tell us a little bit more about you. Um, all right, I'm James. Uh, he him. I'm from Las Vegas, and my favorite ice cream is a uh, chocolate peanut butter. Excellent. Anybody else I didn't call? Cool. Uh, one of, uh, we'll look into James here in a little bit because uh, we have some other important stuff to do next. Um, and just to interject, um, I'm going to sign off for now, uh, but have a great remainder of your orientation and hope to see all of y'all tonight at 530. But yeah, great meeting y'all. Bye. Thanks, Jackson. David, you want to take over for a little bit? I would love to. Um, so, uh, actually, do we want to take a quick break, Ben, before we hop into the rest of this? Yeah, I was thinking about it. Yeah, let's go and do it. Why don't y'all be back at the top of the hour? So take an 11-minute break. We'll see you then. All right, come on back, everybody. Give everybody a second to come back on camera. Hey, um, I'm sorry, uh, James Divine, if you're still there, I think you're actually in the wrong classroom. All right, yeah, I'll go check. I think they added me in the middle of this class to the right one. So on Slack, so I'll try that. Sorry about that. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think I got to work it. Can you hear me now? Yep, we can hear you. 
Okay, awesome. Sweet. Um, before we get going uh, back with this, I just want to do a quick overview of what our schedule looks like today before um, we continue with the orientation deck. And for reference, uh, you can always see what we're scheduled to do for a given day by going into Notion, and clicking on the calendar button. Uh, you're going to learn more about Notion later. Um, but uh, we are slated to continue the um, orientation up until about 11 a.m., um, where we, we've got a lot to do here. Um, and then afterwards, we're going to give you an introduction to Notion after lunch. Lunch will be from 11 to noon uh, every single day, and that is 11 central. So it's going to be 12 noon. This is uh, some of the times show up as central on mine because I'm in central time. So don't let these times confuse you. Um, but we're taking an hour break for lunch. We're going to do an intro to Notion, and then we're going to kind of get into some of the lecture content later this afternoon. So this morning is just purely orientation, getting everybody's um, just on the same page about what the course requirements are and things like that. And then we'll actually get into some of the learning this afternoon. So that's what that looks like. So David, if you want, go ahead. All right, hang on one second here. That's weird. One second. All right, there we go. Well, let's go ahead and pick up where we left off. And David's going to talk to you a little bit. Cool. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and start off by talking about communication because it's the most important thing. Uh, the best way to reach out to us is always going to be on Slack. Uh, you have received at this point the one email that I will send to you this entire course. Uh, please do not email any of us. Uh, we're more than likely to never see it. Um, I, I mean, honestly, I check mine every now and then, but Slack is so, so, so much better and we're always on Slack. So we will actually see that. Um, we are available officially from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, this is class hours. Uh, if you message us outside of those times, uh, we might not be able to respond immediately. Uh, we may respond, but uh, just kind of as a heads up to you, uh, those hours are when we are officially available. Uh, if you have a uh, urgent message that uh, about uh, your attendance or some kind of emergency in your personal life, please let us know as soon as you possibly can so that we're able to kind of help guide you through that. Um, don't like just ghost us for a couple of days and then never reach out and then, you know, send us a message after the fact, like, oh, hey, this thing has happened and like, that is cool, but just let us know as soon as you possibly can. Uh, you should already be in a uh, Slack channel that is uh, labeled as you see there. Uh, that is your primary contact point between yourself and the rest of the instructional team. Uh, every single one of you should have one of these channels set up for you already. Uh, if you do not, please uh, let us know uh, in a DM. Uh, but you should already have that. Uh, talking a little bit more about Slack, you should already be in uh, all of these channels that are here. So again, if you're not in any of these, please reach out to us and let us know. Uh, preferably in the uh, instructor chat that we have set up for you. Uh, but just to kind of give you a brief overview of uh, these channels that we've set up, uh, the main channel that we'll be using for most things, uh, announcements and such, will be in the SEIR 523 classroom channel. Uh, that's where we'll have all of your uh, attendance check-ins, stuff like that. So uh, if you see a message in that channel, it is really, really important and you should pay attention to it. That's where we'll be making announcements. That's where we'll take attendance, stuff like that. Super important channel. Uh, the next most important channel that you probably have is the engineering channel. That is going to be uh, essentially if you have a code-related problem. Any kind of issue that we have uh, with code should go into this channel. Uh, so 
we're going to have uh, talk about this engineering channel a ton more. Uh, but essentially, this uh, channel has all of our uh, previous students in it as well, all of the students that Ben and I have taught uh, over the past couple of years. So this is a fantastic resource, not just for uh, being able to get help with your issues that you have your coding issues, but also kind of networking, uh, getting to know other people that are out there trying to do the same work that you're trying to do in the industry that you're trying to break into. So uh, it is a fantastic resource uh, and you will be using that all of the time. Next, you have your outcomes channel. Uh, this is essentially how your outcomes team will communicate with you. Uh, that is very similar to our classroom channel that you have. Uh, I've already talked about the instructor chat that you have. This is where you talk privately with the entire instructional team. Uh, we prefer that you not necessarily DM us. Uh, this is going to be the place where you are able to talk to all of us uh, collectively so that all the instructors are on the same page about whatever is going on with you. Um, so please utilize that for any uh, in, anything that you need to talk privately with us about. Uh, one we qu also have quick interjection. I'm sorry. Uh, we're getting messages oh. that a bunch of people are not in the outcomes channel. It, are some of you actually in the outcomes channel? Does anybody see SEIR 523 outcomes? Does anybody actually see it? Um, I just joined it. Is that okay? Like I just kind of like searched for it and joined it. Is that good? If you found it and joined it, that's yeah. fine. If fine. you don't see this on the list, don't worry about that yet. We're going to get, we'll talk to your outcomes coaches and we'll get you set up with that. So don't, you don't need to all message us about that. We'll make sure that gets taken care of for you. Thanks, Ben. Uh, next, you have your lecture support channel. Uh, this is where you're going to uh, kind of be chatting about any issues that you run into while you're following along with the lecture. This is kind of where we prefer that you uh, kind of ask questions, at least to start out with. We might escalate some of those uh, up to, you know, elevate them to having you raise your hand whenever we're in Zoom. But most of the time, this lecture support channel will be like your first place you go whenever you have questions about lecture content, you have errors or bugs or something goes going on uh, whenever we have uh, stuff going on with lecture. Uh, we kind of prefer that we uh, use that channel for your questions and support issues so that we're able to kind of triage those as an instructor team uh, and not necessarily take away time from uh, learning from the rest of the class. Uh, you're are of course, uh, going to be able to, you know, get some, uh, class interaction time as well, but, uh, we kind of prefer that we start out posting questions or issues during lecture in that lecture support channel. And then next we have our presentations channel. Uh, this is where we will go whenever we're presenting our unit projects. Uh, so, this is where we're all going to kind of chat together while we are uh, presenting whenever we go into uh, unit project weeks. Uh, so we'll talk way a lot more about that later. But uh, for now, this is a, a great place to kind of be able to lift each other up during presentations and stuff like that. So really, really good channel. Uh, next, we have opponent quotables. Uh, so this is kind of just quotes from funny things that people say in class or notable things that people say in class. Uh, so you'll see us use that throughout the cohort. Next, we have uh, the off topic channel. This is pretty much just a collection of everything that doesn't fit in any of the other channels. If you saw a funny TikTok posted here, see a funny tweet posted here, all that kind of stuff goes into that off topic channel. And finally, we have the interview prep channel. Uh, so this is, uh, again, another channel that uh, all of our or many of our previous students are a part of, um, and you'll uh, you'll are here as well. So as people are going and interviewing, they're likely to talk about things that they run into uh, in this channel, and you're free to do that as well. Um, this is kind of where we monitor things like industry trends and stuff like that to see where uh, kind of the interviewing landscape is at and where you can kind of get help and advice whenever you're going and interviewing yourself. 
So uh, we do have all of this information available in Notion for you as well. You're not just going to see them on these two slides once. So I know that that was uh, quite a lot of information, but you will have access to all of this information as well. So don't stress. I know that's a lot. I know that Slack is a lot for some people starting out. Um, I will say that Slack is absolutely something you're just going to need to get used to. I know this feels like a lot of channels, but I promise you whenever you're actually working, it is not going to be many channels at all. <laughs> um, this is like little baby intro Slack. So um, I, the most important thing that you can do in this class is keep up with these channels because this is how people are communicating with you. And we're going to you know, be talking more about this. Uh, but communication is probably one of the most valuable skills that you'll get from uh, this cohort if you don't already have have really, really honed uh, communication skills. So, um, yeah, next slide, please, Vin. I just wanted to jump in real quick before we move to the next one and say that networking is also a huge part of this course. And um, if you look in Notion, there's also a giant list of other channels uh, that you have access to. Um, there's everything ranging from um, LGBTQIA to Dungeons and Dragons to uh, there's a channel for everything. Uh, and there's a giant list of what are called student resource groups. So if you ever feel like you just want to meet more people and network, that's the place to go. Uh, and just to show you that, you can get, find that in Notion by going to the remote course tools. And if I think that's where that is, we have that in here. And there's an intro to Slack channels. This also gives a better description of all of our channels. And there's a giant list here of additional resource groups uh, if you're interested in joining them. So the ones, again, we don't want to overload you, which is why we didn't put all this information in that slide. But there's a ton of other resource groups, not even on this list um, that you have access to. So please, if you want to be connected with a certain group of people or looking for something, let us know. We can point you in the right direction. Thank you, Ben. All right, uh, picking up again, kind of on that communication piece, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Zoom norms and best practices. So uh, whenever we are in class, your uh, time here should be a pretty much distraction-free zone. Uh, uh, you should really, really set boundaries in your personal space of, hey, like I'm not going to be available from X time to this time, except for maybe like 10 minute breaks every hour or so. Um, so that is going to make you able to devote your full attention to this class. Uh, I highly, highly encourage you keeping your phone out of your reach while you're in class hours. Um, you know, if someone desperately needs to get a hold of you, have them call you or something like that. Um, but I highly recommend not, you know, even having that temptation available to you. Uh, you know, we're not going to necessarily be watching and like, oh, hey, like, don't use your phone, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm not, you know, here to police you like that. But based off of what we've seen in the past, it is uh, much more likely that you will succeed if you kind of limit the distractions uh, during this class time. Uh, part of that also, is that you must be on camera for the entirety of our class unless you need to step away briefly. Uh, definition of that would be like, hey, maybe you need to go to the bathroom. You don't necessarily need to tell us about something like that whenever you're gonna be like away for five minutes or so. But if you need to step away for longer, please let us know. Uh, reach out to us in your instructor chat and say, hey, I my landlord is here and they're coming to look at my AC unit. Totally fine. Just let us know. Uh, that way we're able to kind of, you know, watch our uh, attendance numbers and that kind of stuff. Uh, the attendance stuff that we do is entirely regulatory. Uh, so we're kind of obligated to keep track of uh, who's in class and that they have their camera on and all of that kind of stuff. So that is part of this remote gig uh, that we're all doing together is got to be on camera. Uh, you also should be mindful while you are in uh, class as well. Please be on mute when you're not speaking. Uh, so that way we all don't get distracted and we don't hear your uh, comments and all of that. That's totally fine. We just don't want to hear it. Um, and also try to ensure that you're in a well-lit space uh, and try to have as little going on in the background as possible. Uh, know that that's 
somewhat hard for uh, people, highly recommend setting up a Zoom background if that's the case for you. Uh, so that, you know, your background is blocked out. Uh, and next, a little bit more with Zoom. Uh, you all are probably familiar with this by now because I see that uh, most people have their cameras on. So uh, make sure that you are uh, coming down and uh, using this toolbar that we've got and the bottom of Zoom. Uh, so we've got start video and uh, mute and unmute buttons. You're all familiar with that at this point because we've all been on cam and we've all spoken. Uh, screen sharing is something that you will do quite often here. Uh, so whenever you want to share your screen, you'll click on that green share screen button and make sure that you share your full screen and not individual applications. Uh, so this does require, uh, particularly if you're in Mac OS, uh, that you have given Zoom permission to record your entire screen. Uh, Zoom will not prompt you to do that until you do that share screen action for the first time. So if you haven't already shared your screen before, uh, what you'll wanna do is uh, sometime after uh, class today, hop in here on Zoom, just hit that share screen button if you're on Mac OS and it'll take you, uh, it'll prompt you, hey, uh, do you wanna allow Zoom to record your entire screen? And it'll take you into your settings where you're going to confirm that. You'll then have to quit out of Zoom to be able to share your screen after that. So we ask that you do that ahead of time so that we're not you know, sitting here waiting for you to uh, figure out your Mac OS permissions. So if you're on Mac OS, please at some point uh, after class today, just hop on Zoom real quick, go through that share screen action. All right, and uh, as, uh, as we talked about earlier with our reactions, as Jackson talked about, um, over here, kind of on the left, right side of your uh, Zoom toolbar, you'll have this little reactions button, has that little smiley face. And if you click into that and uh, click on raise hand, what you'll see is that your uh, video pops over to the top of uh, all of the uh, other people in Zoom. And then you'll get that little lower hand action that pops up. Feel free to try this now if you would like to do that. Uh, if you need uh, attention during a lecture from an instructor, uh, this is the best way to be able to uh, get that. Because it pops you up at the top of the list so that everyone can see, oh, hey, this person has their hand up. All right. Just make sure to put your hand back down when yes. your question's been answered. Please do so, or we'll think you have multiple questions. Uh, next, at the very top toolbar, uh, one of the best things that you can do to make sure that you see everybody is to uh, use this uh, view button and then have a uh, selected gallery over here. Right now, since uh, Ben is screen sharing, it'll say side-by-side -side gallery, more than likely. Uh, but you'll want this gallery view selected just so you can see everybody that's in the class. All right. Uh, again, use that raise hand reaction in Zoom so that we're able to uh, know the uh, whoever is lecturing knows that you need assistance. Uh, also, don't DM whoever is lecturing while the lesson is ongoing uh, because they're not looking at their DMs. So uh, if you do need one-on-one uh, -on -one assistance during a lecture, you can use the lecture support channel that is in Slack. Also, we've disabled uh, Zoom chat so that you're not distracted during class by the Zoom chat. If we've had uh, people in the past say that that is a little bit distracting, so we have disabled that. Uh, but you are able to use the classroom channel if you want to, you know, just have shared general thoughts about the lecture or uh, whatever with the uh, group as a whole. So, next slide, Ben. 
I will take over from uh, for the next set here. Uh, Landry, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Um, I'm a, I don't know. I, I was kind of uh, a little confused that we are using so many platforms. I mean, Zoom, Slack, Notion. Um, it, it is like signing into so many, so many things at the same time. Uh, and I was just wondering why we couldn't just use either just Zoom because you can share your screen. And I understand the coding piece of it when we run into, we get into heavy coding that we might need a, a different platform where we go into maybe Slack. But I just, and then the, the other day when I got the email from, I believe it was from David about getting uh, Notion set up and <laughs> which I did. I'm like, why? There's so many different things. So I was hoping sure. that you could uh, you could explain a little bit why we need all those different things. Thank you. Absolutely. So Zoom, obviously, we have to be connected and all be here together on camera so we can see one another. Um, we need an ability to talk to one another uh, through messaging, and Zoom does not provide that off hours because once Zoom shuts down, we have no way to talk to each other if we were to only use Zoom. Only talking in Zoom would be a horrendous nightmare that I don't even want to consider. Uh, so we need a method to be able to talk to one another efficiently, like send messages to one another. That's what Slack is for. Uh, and we need a place to distribute and uh, be able to show you lecture content. And that's what Notion's for. So there doesn't exist a perfect solution to have every single thing out there um, in one nice unified platform. That, that, that doesn't exist. If it did, we'd use it. But it doesn't. So that's why we have each of these different things. Um, as you move on in your career and um, you're going to find that developers just have to manage this. You're going to have, you know, a place to communicate with your coworkers. You're going to have probably more platforms than we use because you're going to have, you know, you're going to have to manage tickets in Jira and you're going to have to manage things in Confluence and you're going to have to manage things. It's, it's just part of being a developer. So I, I can promise you that we are using the least amount of confusing things possible because this is obviously a course designed for uh, introductory software engineering. Um, but everything that we use has a distinct purpose and we try to keep things as simple as possible. So good question. I would also uh, echo what Ben said there at the end. Like it may feel like a lot right now, but kind of like what I said with Slack, like it might feel like a lot of channels, but out in the real world, whenever you are actually doing this as your job, you will have many more platforms that you'll have to manage. You'll have many more Slack channels. You'll have to manage it. Like this is as slim as we can get this uh, to be able to like kind of intro you to this industry. But realistically, as you progress, you're going to have more and more that you're going to manage. So Savvy? Yes, yeah, so I don't, um, you let me know if I'm getting a little too ahead, um, but far, um, segueing into the, um, the lecture information, um, if there's, I appreciate that we have a notion that had like the calendar kind of like knowing a little bit before and like what the topics are, um, is there, is there anything that we could do um, in general to kind of prepare for what the homework would be for that day without giving away what the homework actually is? You can see the homework. Sense? Homework's oh, the there homework's too. Something? Every Everything in this course is on Notion already and ready to go. So if you wanted to look at what deliverable you have assigned three days from now, it's there. Okay, so the homework would be under the deliverables because what I saw when I was looking... I'm on two different screens. Um, was it referring to like the labs and stuff like that, basically? So like yeah, any any assignment we're gonna talk about deliverables later, but yes, you, we'll we'll talk more about that a little bit. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Oh, good question. Kathy. Yeah, I was just gonna ask about the GA dashboard. Is that um, incorporated with the lectures or Another great question. Um, there is some content on the GA dashboard that you have access to, and that's mainly going to be the computer science material. Um, we're going to talk more about that once we get into units three and four, uh, when we actually start reviewing that. We can't really touch on a lot of the computer science topics uh, quite like earlier on in the course because they're not super applicable to what we're doing yet, uh, and because they're very overwhelming. A lot of that material is really dense. 
And because everybody coming in is at kind of different experience levels, some people might have like kind of a feel for what, you know, big O and all the algorithm theory stuff that we're going to talk about is, um, is kind of meant to get across, but a lot of people are just going to be completely overwhelmed by that. So we wait until units three and four to go over a lot of that material. Um, but you do not need to worry about doing anything in the GA thing without us telling you first. If there's something in there that you need to do, we'll let you know. Cool. Good question. Savvy? Uh, one more thing, super quick, touching on um, what you were saying about the uh, different experience levels. Um, is there some, this is kind of like a general question, but um, like from my experience, I have, I started out on Windows and um, I was under the impression that it was, Apple was more supported in this type of course. It is. But I prefer Windows. So sure. I kind of, um, and I know a lot of people might kind of be in like a rare situation, just not knowing, um, like wanting to use something, but not knowing if there's going to be full amount of support for it. Sure. Um, how would we go about that? What's your advice on that, I guess? Here's my <laughs> advice. Because I want to kind of get that for him. Sure. Um, the reason that you were told that is because that is true for 90% of the cohorts that are out there. Um, most of the instructors out there don't support anything other than Mac OS. You're, again, lucky and got us. And David has put together an incredible install fest guide for 76 different operating systems. And the time and energy that we've put in over the past nine cohorts to do that has made it so that y'all are able to do that. What I would recommend doing yeah. if you have the ability to use multiple things is if you've already bought a Mac, use the Mac because the chances of you developing on a Mac in the future are highest. Um, if you're using Windows or Linux, you're probably going to have more issues with things as we go. That's just the nature of the beast. Most of the install problems we see are Windows or Linux related. Um, you have, again, the benefit of having uh, instructors that have taught on all of those operating systems. I've taught on all three, uh, as has David. So actually, I don't know if David's taught on Linux, but um, it's... Uh, if you already have a Mac, use the Mac because that's probably what you're going to see out in the wild. But there are install fest guides set up for, for everything. So okay, question. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, I just kind of want to go over some of the expectations from the SEI course. Um, this course is stressful. They call it a boot camp because it's it's tough, it's hard, right? We're going to be cramming information or attempting to cram information into your brains. It's like the throwing spaghetti at a wall or seeing what sticks or drinking from a fire hose. Those are two very good analogies for kind of how a lot of this is going to feel um, when we start going over this stuff. Um, it, it's going to take a couple of days sometimes for the material to sink in, up to a week for some of you. Uh, and that's a really tough thing to kind of digest for people who haven't been in this kind of environment before. Um, you know, usually, it, uh, you know, things like school or like uh, e even in college, it's something where you learn it and you're like, oh, yeah, that's how that works. And you kind of know it. Uh, and that's not the case for a lot of this stuff. We're going to be throwing a lot of information at you. So you have to be OK with being frustrated. You have to be OK with things not all making sense right at, at the beginning. Um, I would say a majority of the students in the program kind of go through this cycle, which David's going to describe here in a minute. We have a nice little graphic where we're going to kind of talk about that. You've seen it before, but we're going to go more in depth as to um, kind of the emotional cycle of learning here in just a moment. But you're going to, each of the four units in this course are broken down into three-week segments. So the first two weeks of every unit are going to be learning. First week is the basics. Second week is going to be more in-depth topics. And the third week is going to be a project week. So a lot what we've heard from students in the past is that a majority of their light bulb, aha, oh, I finally get this moments come towards the beginning of project week when it's like, oh, that's how that works. And oh, that's why I need to do that that way. So don't expect to get everything right at the beginning. Um, failure is the path to learning. You will get frustrated. You will get discouraged. Um, a way to kind of mitigate that is to celebrate wins when you have them with other people. That's one of the other things that's really important to build a network um, while you're taking this course, and you're going to find out why for outcomes purposes. But it's also see so you, you have people to talk to about this stuff when you have when you have problems. Um, 
I can't, again, sing the praises enough of the instructional team that you have. We are awesome. Uh, and the, um, the network that we have set up in that engineering channel of uh, alumni and, and you know, previous graduates, and they're, they want to help. You're going to see them responding to a lot of the engineering posts as well. Um, just remember also that you can't compare your learning pace to those around you. Everybody learns things at different rates. Some of you are coming in with more background experience than others. Some of you are coming in with no background experience. Some of you are going to be you know, writing code on a Mac that you bought a week and a half ago and don't know how it works yet. That's how these courses work. Um, we are equipped to handle those issues. We are equipped to help you. Um, but you just have to let us know when you have problems. We're going to talk more about that here in a minute. Um, but you can't compare yourself to anyone other than yourself. Are you better at the end of this program? At the end of unit one, are you better than you were when you started? And if the answer is yes, you're moving in the right direction. Um, it's always fun to watch the first couple lectures that we go through once you've completed the course and look back like, oh my God, I cannot believe the questions that got asked back then. Like that stuff is, it's a, it's a joke now, but you look back at some, even some of the code you wrote um, when you get done with the course, you're going to look back at, uh, you know, when you when you graduate and look at some of the code you wrote in unit one, and just, like, I cannot believe that I wrote that. Uh, and that's, that's good. That means you're growing and we don't expect you to write flawless code. That's unreasonable. It's just not the way this works. You're going to learn. You're going to get better as you go. Um, don't fall behind on your outcome stuff. Please, please, please. This is what gets you a job. So please, please, please stay on top of your outcome stuff. Um, here are some expectations from your instructors. We make every possible stride to be fair, just, and equitable. Um, we're always going to be as honest with you as possible. That's kind of one of the pillars of the way I teach is that I'm super honest with everybody about everything. Uh, I'm not going to tell you a lie. When the material is going to get tough, I'm going to tell you ahead of time, like, hey, this lecture tomorrow is going to be a rough one. Make sure you get some rest tonight uh, and have a, a good breakfast. Like, I'm going to tell you when things are rough and, you know, we're going to give you a fair and honest feedback on, on the things that you submit. Um, uh, on that note, your instructors don't know everything. That's how software engineering works. There's not one person out there that knows everything. It doesn't work like that. Um, and one of the highlights of my day occasionally when it happens is when we don't know something, somebody will ask a question like, how do you do X, Y, and Z? It's like, you know, I don't know that. Let's Google it. Let's figure it out together. And then we get to go on that journey of learning how that works together because that's what this course is. We don't teach you how to code in this course. We teach you how to learn how to code so that you're able to go out once this course is finished and do this on your own and pick up new things, learn new languages, learn new frameworks. Um, obviously, we're going to teach you how to code, but that's not what this course does. This course is designed to give you the fundamentals of what you need to be able to go out and pick things up on your own and continue your education, continue learning. Um, software and libraries and like languages, they evolve and they change over time. Um, it's part of the reason that we have to rewrite stuff in the lectures all the time is because things change. Um, if you're not a fan of reading, if you don't like reading documentation, this course might not be right for you. Uh, and this career choice might not be right for you because you're going to have to stay on top of things as the languages continue to develop uh, and evolve. So um, we will always do our best to get you an answer to your question. Like we don't leave questions unanswered. So um, we are also going to make sure that we do our best to set all of our expectations ahead of time. You're going to hear us talk about what expectations are for things. We have very clear guidelines on everything that you're going to turn in. Um, our code review sheets that we're going to have for your projects. Every single, there's a line item of things that your project needs to have to pass. Um, so all of our expectations for everything that you turn in will be clear. Um, also, at the end of, oh, at the end of every week, uh, we're going to give you a feedback survey. Uh, there'll also be three larger surveys that we ask you to do where you give like in-depth feedback on each of your instructors. But there's a weekly survey that says, this is how I feel about the lecture material this week. These are questions I might have. And just like, they are optional, but we really want you to do those surveys because the more people that do surveys, the more feedback we get, 
the more feedback we get, we can digest that and turn that into a better experience for not only you during this cohort, but for future students. And again, David and myself have been teaching forever now. Uh, this is my ninth cohort. I think this is what, your seventh, eighth? Yep. Um, and our IAs have been around for a long time too. We are a very cohesive team and um, we've put a lot of our time and energy into taking that feedback and turning it into a better program. So um, you should have fun, it's good stuff. Um, when you do leave feedback and when we leave feedback for you, uh, we're going to be abundantly clear. We ask that you do the same. Use simple, direct, and brief language. Um, feedback shouldn't be packed with emotion. It should be full of, this is, this is the feedback, this is the thing. You have to take the emotion out of that. Um, you want to get your point across, but be kind and provide feedback with good intention. Um, another important thing with feedback is that it's timely. Um, if you're giving us feedback on something from more than a week ago, we can't really do anything with that, which is why we have those surveys every week. Um, if you have something to say to one of us or have a question about why we do things a certain way, just ask us. You're not going to annoy us. You're not going to aggravate us. Like, we're open to answering those questions. And one of the most important obstacles that you're going to have to overcome during unit one, hopefully in unit one, is realizing that your instructors are human beings. We've all been in your shoes. We know what it's like to learn this stuff for the first time. And you have to just talk to us. We're, we're here to listen. We're willing to listen. Uh, and if you have an issue, just come to us and we'll, we'll help you sort it out. Um, your feedback should be actionable. If there's not something we can do about something you're giving us feedback on, it's gonna to be tough to have a conversation about that. Um, it can be positive too. If you wanna to say, hey, I really liked that lecture today. Like we love getting messages like that. Um, there's also a time and place for feedback that's gonna be in the weekly surveys that we send out. And on um, uh, there'll be a couple other surveys, but we'll talk more about those when we get there. time commitment that you can expect. Um, you should be ready to spend at least 60 hours a week in class. You're going to be working on labs, assignments, assessments, projects, outcomes, deliverables. Monday through Friday, we go eight hours a day. Uh, and then when you add on top of that, your labs, assessments, projects, outcome stuff, that's about 20 hours plus a week. Um, for some of you, this may be more than that. Um, it's just how much time you put into it. Um, everybody has a different level of experience. So these hours may vary from person to person. Um, you have to limit commitments that you have outside of this class. I, I've seen in nine cohorts, maybe two people with jobs get through the cohort. So if you're secretly working on the side and haven't told us you really, that's a conversation we should have because if you absolutely need to work to make money to be able to support yourself while you're taking this course, uh, let us know so that we can help you with tips on how to make that work because it's not an easy thing to do. Um, the, um, we don't want to scare you away by saying this. We just want to let you know and be honest with you about what this course is going to be like. It's tough. Um, this is going to be your life for the next 12 weeks. Um, one of the things we talked about was that, uh, or that we're going to talk about when you look at Notion is the, um, let me pop that up in here real quick. Notion has a, if you go to the main thing, this panic button, and this has a list of help, I'm feeling this and I need help with it. And um, one of those things was, uh, I'm having coding dreams. This is going to be a reality for all of you. You are going to dream about code at some point over the next few weeks. And it's going to weird the fuck out of you. It is weird when you wake, you wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, was I just dreaming about a for loop or like how to fix an array problem? Like it's weird. And it, your brains are gonna be like changed over the next 12 weeks. So just be ready for that. Um, by the end of this week, you're gonna have access to an app that will allow you to check your attendance, look at your deliverable feedback, We'll talk more about that then. Um, again, because we didn't have one cohesive solution to five different things, uh, kind of going off of what Landry said earlier, uh, your instructors built an app to help track and manage all of that stuff so that you have one easy to go to place that you can put on your bookmarks bar 
where you'll be able to submit your deliverables, look at feedback, um, it, check your attendance, all that stuff is able, able to be done from there. We'll talk more about that this week. Um, that's Clippy, the Flamingo. You can also see Clippy behind David. If you look right behind there, there's a little Flamingo. You want to get Clippy? He's called Clippy because somebody clipped his legs off. There you go. Yeah, I entered a Clippy. Cool. Um, awesome. So graduation requirements, you have to meet uh, your project requirements. You have to satisfactorily complete and present a project for each of the four units. You have to maintain a completion rate of 80%, at least 80% on all deliverables. Labs, uh, it says labs, homework, and quizzes, but this is labs, essentially. We, use, we, don't, we try not to use the word homework. It's, if it's a deliverable, it's something you need to turn in. Deliverables can be labs. They can be uh, project prep materials, like getting ready for a pro uh, unit project. They can be um, quizzes. Quizzes count towards deliverables, which we'll talk more about here in a moment. Um, but you have to maintain at least 80% on that. Your bar should be 100%. If we are putting enough weight on something to make it a deliverable, that means it's important. And because of that importance, you should shoot for 100% on that. Um, you have to follow the attendance policy. You're allowed a total of three absences over the course. Um, I know this doesn't seem like a lot, but it's because if you miss a day, you're gonna be missing a lot of material because this is a fast paced course. Um, really any more than three days out of this course, you're just gonna be so far behind at that point that it's gonna be almost impossible to get you caught back up. Um, tardies or early departures are going to equal an absence. Um, or three of them rather. So if you're late three times or leave early three times, that will count as an absence. Um, your attendance will be marked by using Slack. We're gonna have a little, hey, click on this emoji when you're here uh, for the day. And that's how attendance is going to be taken. So obviously there's a little wiggle room the first couple of days as people learn how to figure out how Slack works, but that's gonna be the process is we're gonna have a morning attendance question where you have to re reply to the morning attendance question and that's how our attendance is going to be taken. Um, again, to be uh, counted as present, you have to have your camera on. Um, it, here's what I want to say about the camera thing. Your camera should be on all the time. If you need to get up and go to the bathroom, you don't need to send us a message saying, I'm getting up to go to the bathroom. Just turn your camera off, come back in you know, a few minutes, however long you need, uh, and then just turn your camera back on. Um, if you have an emergency, send us a message turn your camera off, go deal with whatever it is that you need to, to deal with. But you don't need to, we don't need to get to the, the level of granularity where you guys are messaging us every six seconds saying, I got to go let my dog out, or I got to go do this. It's just, if you're going to be gone for more than a couple minutes, let us know. Otherwise, just turn your camera off and come back when you're done. Um, tuition, it's, you have to pay your tuition. That's not a, an instructor thing. That's a student experience thing. Um, Quizzes and timed assessments. Um, throughout the course, we're going to have quizzes that test your knowledge of critically important topics we've covered. Um, you can answer none of the questions correctly on a quiz and still get credit for turning the quiz in. The quizzes are not, they're gonna be graded. You're gonna get feedback on them, but a quiz that counts as a deliverable, as long as you do it, it counts as turning the deliverable in. So don't let that increase your stress levels. Um, so quizzes will count as deliverables. They're just to make sure that you know what you're covering. They're more of a self-assessment than anything else. Um, so as long as you submit it, no matter how many answers you get right or wrong, you'll get credit for completing it. Um, they're a great way for you to gauge your understanding of what we've covered uh, and provide an opportunity. So you can say, hey, I don't know this as well as I should. I should go back and review some of this stuff. Um, at the end of units one and two, there's going to be a timed assessment. Um, we are going to have a three-hour time block. Uh, I believe the dates on this are Wednesday. It's on the calendar. Uh, but it's the final week of unit one and the final week of unit two on a Wednesday. And um, you're going to build an app. We're going to give you the specifications. It's going to be, you can't talk to anybody else, but you can use all the resources you've gotten in class, the practice apps that you've built, the lecture content, the YouTube videos, whatever you need to do it, just can't talk to anybody. Um, and, uh, you'll have three hours to complete that. Typically they take about 45 to 90 minutes. 
Um, but this is a great way to see whether you've picked up the absolute basic concepts that we feel are critical to being able to move on to the next unit. And again, the same thing with the assessments, or the same things with quizzes apply to the assessments. As long as you turn something in, you will get credit for doing it, whether it works or not. Um, it's meant as a self-assessment. Um, what else? That's pretty much it on that one. Um, plagiarism. We, if you plagiarize something, we're going to catch you. It's the way it works. Um, we're probably not going to have quite as many issues with this uh, in unit one because we're not doing, uh, we kind of switched up with the unit project as this unit. But it, it, it's a huge deal to copy someone else's code from the internet, like large chunks of code or working parts of applications. Um, you will get kicked out of the course if we find that you've plagiarized something. Um, we want you to ask us if you think what you're copying is acceptable or not. Um, there's an example here, small snippets of code that small small solve small problems taken from Stack Overflow or similar resources are generally an exception. So if you need to find a method to sort an array alphabetically and you look at Stack Overflow and find a way to do that, that's fine, right? That's a problem that's been solved a bazillion times and that's the way to do it. Um, but if you are building, if say we give you a game to build like tic-tac-toe, it's like I'm seeing into the future, something you might have to do. Um, if you take somebody else's code and Google how to build tic-tac-toe JavaScript and use that code and turn it in, you're going to get kicked out of the program. I'm just being upfront and honest with you right now. It is so easy for us to see that because we teach things a very specific way. And if it's not the way that we've taught it and you can't explain it, it's really easy to find on the internet. Like we can, we're, we're good at using Google too. And finding things that people have copied is really, really simple for us. So I would love for, for this to be the first cohort where I don't have to kick somebody out for plagiarism. It would really like absolutely make my experience as an instructor because every single cohort I've taught, I've had at least one. So um, just if you have a question about whether or not something constitutes plagiarism, let us know. And I'm going to talk more about this before we um, turn in our unit projects too, because this is a big deal. Uh, David, you want to take over? Gladly. All right. So uh, Steph has already shown you this slide. She showed it to you during uh, your uh, kind of uh, onboarding orientation that we did uh, with her last week. But uh, this chart here is going to kind of represent uh, the emotional cycle that many, if not all of you, will go through during this cohort. Uh, so uh, you start up at the top, uh, top left, with uninformed optimism. This is you coming in day one right now, probably. You don't really know what's ahead of you, but you are, you know, you're excited to be here and you are ready to get coding, right? Uh, as time moves on, uh, that will kind of probably transform a little bit into informed pessimism, where you are uh, you know, more aware of the challenges ahead of you. You're, you know, in th this coding mentality, and now you have gotten through lecture and you're like, wow, can I actually do this? And that leads into uh, that kind of bottom part where you are uh, in this really pessimistic place and you are not really sure if you're going to make it through the assignment, through the unit, through the day, whatever. Uh, and then hopefully we turn that around and get into this place of hopeful realism and then also informed optimism. So uh, just to talk a little bit about this chart, um, this can happen over the course of an hour. This can happen over the course of a unit. This could happen over the course of the entire course. Uh, you're not necessarily going to you know, go through this at all in unit one. And actually many people that have any previous coding experience uh, unit one is going to kind of get you into a little bit of an emotional high with this course. And it can be really, really dangerous as you move into uh, particularly like unit two, where uh, really 
I highly doubt that any of you have seen the things that we're doing before in unit two. So if you've had that like previous coding experience, you might kind of be like, oh, wow, I can totally, you know, do this. You have that informed optimism feeling through a lot of unit one. Uh, but then as you move into unit two, like suddenly there's a lot of emotional work that you had to have to do along with the learning work uh, in unit two that you necessarily didn't have to do in unit, uh, unit one. And that's kind of where we see a lot of people that come into this program and are uh, have that previous experience. That's where they get tripped up a lot because a lot of that emotional work that people that are brand new to coding have had to do throughout unit one someone who has done coding before hasn't had to do that emotional work in this course yet. And they kind of hit a wall. Um, so just kind of know that, you know, this can happen to any of you at any time. It can happen at any like period of time. Uh, this like determination and giving up phase at the bottom, that is where you need to be kind of reaching out to us, reach out to your peers, uh, network with the people around you that are in the same place as you. Uh, and we can bring you into that, you know, like, hey, you can do this, you can make it through this. Um, and, you know, we can have that conversation of, you know, making, uh, kind of getting you to turn around and uh, getting you into a place where you feel better, where you feel motivated, and you can actually do the work that's in front of you. So uh, just want to talk a little bit more in detail about uh, this uh, slide that Steph showed you. But yeah. So uh, let's talk about some tips for success, things that have worked well for people in the past. So uh, we highly recommend that you establish a regular sleep schedule immediately. Um, that's going to be so, so, so vital to your success here. Um, and that you are also eating healthily. Um, your brain needs fuel to be able to think about the things that we're going to be doing. If you're not providing it that fuel, then it's uh, going to be a really, really hard time. Uh, so uh, also make sure that you're going out and you are exercising. Ben is just like really going through and I'm all over the place. Yeah, you are. <laughs> uh, we do have the GA fitness and health uh, channel for you to uh, kind of network with other people about fitness and health. So uh, highly recommend hopping in that uh, if you would uh, like some extra motivation there. Um, the These three things, exercising, um, making sure that you're sleeping, and also eating healthily is like, man, I cannot stress how important these three things are. Um, you have got to maintain this throughout the cohort. Um, that is the main reason why we have uh, issues with people in the past that have had jobs going through this cohort is because a lot of them cannot develop a regular sleep schedule. So they come here and they can't learn anything and then they, go to work and try to do their thing and they have no time to be able to actually go through and complete assignments, stuff like that. So really like uh, if you could do one thing here, I would say, make sure that you're sleeping. Uh, your brain has to rest or it can't do anything whenever you're awake. Um, also highly recommend actually going outside occasionally, um, touch the grass. Isn't that nice? Um, you, you've got to be able to go through and, uh, you know, leave the computer occasionally. I know it can be hard at some points, but um, uh, it's the, this is the advice that I don't personally don't follow on this list. Um, I, I am very, very bad at going outside, but hey, you should probably do that. It will benefit your mental health greatly. Um, uh, yes. So next piece of advice for success, communicate. Uh, you almost... I have never, ever had a student before that has ever, ever over communicated with us. Um, it is virtually impossible for you to do. Um, please, if you're having issues, talk to us. Um, if you are, you know, if you see things in a lecture that needs corrected, I, I have no idea. Um, but if you do, then communicate that to us. Um, it is 
again, almost impossible to over communicate with us. So please just talk to us about things that you're feeling and seeing, and uh, we'll be able to help you with that. Also be vocal in your surveys. Uh, and Ben has kind of given this away, but uh, we cannot help you if we don't know there is a problem. And this is so, 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 so important that there's a giant slide dedicated only to it. We cannot help you if we don't know that there is a problem. Please, if you're having problems in this course, you need to reach out to us. You need to talk to us. Please, 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 please. This is a huge deal. Uh, all right. Also, don't fall behind. Uh, you want to make sure that you're coming in and you're setting your goal at 100% lab completion. Uh, sure, you technically only have to be at 80% uh, percent to be able to move forward after a unit. Highly recommend just set your goal at 100%. It'll make life really, really easy for you. Um, if you, you know, if something happens along the way where you have some emergency and you can't turn in a couple of labs, then that won't be the end of the world if you've already set your goal at 100% to start the class with. If you put anything behind in this class, it's going to pile up immediately. Uh, I know that there are likely procrastinators among you. Um, there is absolutely no time to procrastinate in this course. Um, that is, is literally not possible. Um, most of your assignments after you get them are going to be due uh, two mornings after that. So really that leaves you with a space of about probably eight-ish hours uh, to be able to, to actually work on an assignment after it's been given to you. So uh, we've also will likely assign uh, labs multiple days in a row. So you might have one lab that uh, is assigned say on a Tuesday, another lab that's going to be assigned on a Wednesday. So you aren't necessarily going to have Wednesday night to be able to even work on that original lab. I cannot stress how important it is to not procrastinate because there is not time for it. Uh, make sure that you're staying organized. Uh, make sure you're keeping your code directories and GitHub organized. We'll talk more about how we help you uh, keep your code stuff organized in, uh, this afternoon, actually. Uh, also make sure that you are using uh, folders and bookmark or use folders to uh, organize your bookmarks that you have in your browser. Uh, you'll likely be bookmarking a lot of things as you move through this course. Highly recommend setting up some sort of organization system so that you're able to track the things that you've actually bookmarked instead of just having hundreds of free floating uh, sites that you've bookmarked at the end of the course. Uh, a lot of people have success here just setting aside like 15 minutes a week and saying like, hey, this is my time for organization. So uh, also highly recommend that you read ahead. Uh, as Ben has mentioned already, um, all of the course content is available to you right now. Um, there will be some minor changes along the way with some of the content, but for the most part, uh, you, at this point in time, can see when all of your deliverables are due for the remainder of the course. You can go and you can look at 90% of the content that we're going to teach through the course uh, today, right now. So um, the really, this calendar uh, is going, it has the whole course listed for you already, not just the next few days. So highly recommend reading ahead on that content. Uh, so like the night before, just Take a quick little browse. Hey, what are we covering, covering tomorrow? What are, can I like be developing questions about uh, so that you're able to go into the next day uh, a little bit more informed and able to ask those questions and not have to come up with something on the spot. Uh, we also recommend checking out uh, the level up resources that we provide. Uh, those level up resources are particularly useful if you feel like you are ahead of the rest of the class or where the rest of the class is. Uh, so that level up content is uh, super useful. Uh, a lot of it is just kind of, you know, as the name implies, it levels you up. It's going to be a little bit bonus content uh, if you kind of feel like you have the bandwidth to be able to tackle that. You'll see that this afternoon too. You'll see an example of what that looks like. So if that seems foreign to you, we'll, you'll see it. Yep. Uh, also, as you know, as you're reading ahead, 
do a quick Google search. I'm like, hey, what's this technology that we're learning tomorrow? Um, do that kind of little legwork on your own, uh, just so you're a little bit more informed about the technologies that you're learning about, you know, what is on the calendar for the day ahead. Um, and highly recommend this next thing, especially during unit one, uh, for whenever you're not as familiar with the terminal, but highly recommend going through and completing the setup step from our lecture events in the calendar a day ahead of time. So I'll show you all that uh, this afternoon, actually, uh, what those setups look like and uh, how you can kind of get ahead of uh, where we're going to uh, be for an actual lecture. Uh, again, highly recommend that if you have any uh, unfamiliarity with the terminal at all. All right. Uh, next, don't be afraid to Google. Um, search the internet for errors whenever you get them. Other people have had the same exact errors as you, it turns out. So by being able to go and uh, Google that kind of information is going to be highly, highly valuable to you. Uh, just throwing this out there now, as you're starting to do this, W3 schools is not a good reference. It's often going to be the very first thing in a Google result. Uh, you're going to want to uh, kind of change your Google algorithm so it behaves a little bit differently, uh, click more on Stack Overflow, click more on uh, MDN resources. Uh, the reason we prefer that you not use W3 schools is that all of the content there is outdated. But you will find stuff that works, uh, but it, for the most part, it is not going to be a valuable resource for you. You want to stick to uh, something like MDN instead. And again, we'll kind of go through this uh, during this first week, a little bit more in depth. Whenever we're introducing new things, uh, we'll show you kind of, you know, what this looks like on MDN. We'll get you reading documentation, all that kind of stuff. So uh, highly recommend also rewatching the class lectures that you get. Uh, there is a, a lectures recording link that is in the course hub in Notion. Uh, again, whenever we review Notion this afternoon, we'll go and look at it or Ben will show you right now. Look at that, lecture recordings. So everything that happens here is going to be recorded, at least as far as our lectures go. And you're going to be able to go and rewatch these lectures. Highly, highly valuable. If you're like, if you're stuck on a particular concept and just need a quick review of it, go find that lecture recording. It's a fantastic resource. Um, a lot of times going through at your own pace will help you kind of retain that knowledge a little bit better. So. Next slide, Ben. All right, uh, we also have curated a ton of uh, content for you as well that is uh, really littered throughout our course content in Notion. Um, make sure you're checking out links to uh, documentation and references that we provide. Make sure you're uh, looking at that level up content. Again, if you feel comfortable with what you're learning already, uh, check out that external media uh, location in Notion as well. Make sure you're referencing our example code that we provide you. Uh, go back on videos, tutorials, all of this stuff. We have so many resources that we provide you with that you can kind of uh, leverage to enhance your learning while you're here. Why don't we take a short six minute break and at 10 past, we'll finish up with the rest of this slide deck. And just for the record, we usually take breaks every hour for five to 10 minutes. So there will always be, with very few exceptions, a short break between five and 10 minutes every hour during the course. All right. Um, another, uh, just to kind of keep going with some of the advice and tips for success, um, you're going to hear a lot of this from our alumni. Uh, we're going to have an alumni panel on Friday afternoon come in and talk to y'all a little bit about what the course is like. You can ask them questions about what they felt when they were going through the course, um, make a couple connections with some of them, uh, and you know, use them as resources. Uh, it's always nice to talk to people that have been through this experience. So we always invite um, you know, some of our previous grads to come back and, and have a little Q&A session. So we're gonna be doing that on Friday. Um, 
one of the biggest things that you can do to help not only yourself, but another person is to share in their struggle. If you notice that someone's having a problem with a certain piece of code or, you know, on the engineering channel, if you've got the answer to that or want to help them figure that out and struggle through it with them, uh, that's that help is always appreciated. Just send them a message. Say, hey, let's hop in a Zoom room. Let's check it out. Um, the response time for our engineering channel is usually pretty crazy, like like good crazy. Um, we are very good about getting back to people as soon as possible on a lot of the issues that you post there, especially in the first couple of units, because we've seen really all of those issues so many times now that you know we, we know what the answers are pretty quickly. Um, but if you see something that you potentially want to dig into with somebody else, that help is always appreciated. Uh, and that allows you to celebrate wins together. Uh, there's no greater feeling than being able to execute your code or to have your application run without a problem, uh, without any bugs or without, without any errors. And uh, taking something you've been working on for, I don't know, an hour or a week uh, and seeing it, the final product actually work properly. There's really not a feeling like I can't describe how good that feels. And I really hope that all of you experience that here shortly. Um, make sure that you're using that engineering channel. Um, you're not here to struggle on a problem for hours. You're, you know, there's, there's a support network to help you out with this stuff. So please make sure that you're using that. Um, it usually takes a week or two for some of the students to kind of open up and start posting things in there. We'll talk more about the guidelines that you need to use for that channel. Um, but it, that channel is amazing and there are so many awesome resources in there Pre like you can even scroll through it and look at previous posts that people have made you can search for your specific issue or error in that channel because someone's likely had it in the past um and again i just wanted to say this again teaching someone is probably the best way to learn something um it's just such a rewarding experience and being able to kind of solidify that knowledge in your brains uh, as you're showing somebody else how something works, it's just it's a really good way to cement that that foundational material. Um, you also need to know when to take a break. Um, I kind of want to. We we're just talking talking about problems, so I'm going to hit this point first. Um, don't struggle with a single problem for hours. Please, please, please reach out um, and use the engineering channel if you have a question. Uh, don't struggle on something for more than like half an hour to an hour tops. Um, I know a lot of people are, you're going to have to get over your pride uh, and that sense of ego that I'm sure some of you have like, well, I can figure this out on my own. Don't do that. If you, if you've been working on something for more than an hour and you can't figure it out, post in the engineering channel, and let somebody help you out with it. Um, some people find it effective to set timers to remind them when to take a break and stop. Um, you need to be able to identify effective methods for dealing with stress. This is, I cannot, cannot tell you how important this is. Um, I go on walks when I get stressed out. Um, and you know, I, my wife, I have my wife to talk to about stuff. If I get super stressed out about something, um, you have to have a method to be able to deal with stress or you're not going to be able to make it through this course because you are going to get stressed out in this course. Um, we've already kind of mentioned this, David already talked about eating well, sleeping well, and exercising. Your brain doesn't work without fuel and your brain doesn't work without rest. So you've, you really have to prioritize these things. Um, if you feel that your typing skills are less than they should be, um, there's a little resource here, keybr.com. Um, you can practice getting your typing speed up. Um, all of the content that we have is in Notion and you will be able to copy and paste code and commands from Notion into your uh, VS code. But it, you want to be able to do that without having to rely on copying and pasting because muscle memory is huge when you start coding things out. Um, you'll find as we go through a lot of the material that there are shortcuts for doing things that we intentionally don't show you until we've gotten that muscle memory down a couple of times. Um, and it, it's for exactly that reason. If you start doing it and you start getting into the habit of typing those things out, you're gonna be in a much better position to be able to do it on your own later without having to copy and paste things. Cause that's ultimately what you, you wanna be able to write this code without having to copy and paste it. Um, let's see here. 
more outcome stuff, make sure you get things done as soon as possible and outcomes. Ultimately, your outcome stuff combined with your portfolio are what are going to get you a job um, or at least get you a job interview. We should say it that way. Um, you really have to start networking now, not only with the people in the course, but other alumni, uh, people that you see post in the engineering channel from you know, previous cohorts or people that reply to your posts, add them on LinkedIn. Um, and uh, if you have an outcomes or like a networking event, like if you're going to a, you know, seminar on some of their free seminar or whatever, like post the event details for that in your outcomes channel, let other people know what's going on. Um, because the more, a lot of times people will hesitate going to those, well, I don't really know if I belong there. Get a, people, get a couple of people from the classroom together and go to those things together. Uh, it helps kind of lower the, the stress level of going to one of those things by yourself. Um, you will get out of outcomes what you put into outcomes. That's, I think, the best sum of everything that has to do with outcomes. The more work you put into it, the better result you're going to get from it. Uh, and trust the process. Some miscellaneous things here. We have three holidays over this course, all of which are on Mondays. Um, so we have Memorial Day, Juneteenth, and the 4th of July. So those are the three days that we will have off during this cohort. Um, and another note here, if any major updates are released during the cohort, please ask us before you install those. Um, if we see that, we'll likely make a message before y'all even realize it because David's all over the, the Twitter thing to, he knows everything because of the, the Twitter. So he'll probably be on top of these updates before any of you. But uh, if you notice that there's a big update out, just ask and let us know and we'll tell you whether or not it's okay to upgrade. Um, the reason that we try to use the same versions for everything is so that we have consistency across the class. If we have everyone using different versions of Node and different versions, of, it's just going to create problems. So let us know and we'll let you know whether it's okay to upgrade or not. Uh, on that topic, if I can butt in a second, uh, there will be a, a new public beta version of Mac OS that will be released sometime during this cohort more than likely. Please do not install that on your machines. I'm sure he got that from the Twitter. Um, here are your responsibilities as a student. Um, treat this as your job. Be professional. Uh, be proactive and resourceful. Respect your classmates. Uh, show up on time and ready to work. Don't miss more than three days. Communicate daily and often. I really, I can't emphasize this enough. Like, if you have a question, just ask us. We're here to help. We're not going to be annoyed by messages from any of you. Um, reach out. Get to know us. We want to get to know you. Um, trust yourself. Um, one of the biggest obstacles that new software engineers face is imposter syndrome. We're going to talk a little bit more about that probably in outcomes. Um, but you're not going to feel like you're ready to do this stuff at the end of the course, even though you are. You're ready to go out there and get a, a you know junior level or uh, some of you maybe a hair higher than that uh, position somewhere at a company, but you're not going to think you are. You're going to think that you're not ready and you're going to be terrified. And that's it. everyone goes through that process. And we have resources to help kind of mitigate that. And you'll see that you actually are ready. Um, and then embrace the growth mindset. You are now transitioning into a career where you are going to be experiencing growth all the time with what you know. Um, the technologies that we're going to teach you are constantly evolving. Um, I, just for example, uh, React Router, it's something we're going to use in Unit 3, had a bunch of major overhauls, and we had to completely rewrite all of the content for Unit 3 a couple of cohorts ago, because that's what happens. It's just tech evolves. Uh, and on that note, you may, again, see small changes being made to the lecture over time. So I wouldn't read more than like a day or two in, in advance because that's just not a good idea because that stuff's going to be edited. Now it's time for some questions. If you have a question, go ahead and raise your hand. We'd be happy to field all of those. I know people have questions. Landry. Yes. Um, we, do we have access to this uh, PowerPoint presentation? Uh, yes, this uh, copy of this is in, if you look in Notion, you should see 
under the calendar, if we look at the calendar, you'll see today, the 23rd, the first thing that we had was this orientation. Okay. And if you click on that, it has a link right here to the presentation that we're using. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, one more question before the next, if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah, um, so for each day, we should have all three platforms open. I'm talking uh, obviously Zoom because we got to talk to each other and then the Slack in the background and I'll also have Notion open. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to start using VS Code and the browser as well starting this afternoon. So cool. Good questions. Rob? For the Slack channels, um, I'm missing like three. Is that something you have to be added to? Like I'm, I'm missing engineering lecture support and then my instructor tab. I can't find it. One of the, um, let's see. Maybe we added the wrong Rob. I got added to this cohort pretty late. So uh, it looks like we've just got the wrong Rob. Oh, okay. no, you're not in there. We'll get that fixed for you right now. One of our okay. um, Thank you. instructors will get that for you. John? Um, yeah, so I guess it's like I'm, um, you know, looking through like the course calendar and seeing like this first week or two, like, you know, it's like you know, a lot of JavaScript and stuff, I guess, like you've seen before and stuff we got to practice in the pre-work. And I guess just like looking forward and like seeing, I guess, what some of like the uh, some of the assignments and labs and deliverables, like I'm already starting to feel maybe a little bit of imposter syndrome, like. Like, am I going to be good enough to like get this done? And like, you know, I guess it's like this part of me that obviously believes I feel like I can. There's a reason why I signed up for this course. But like, is this normal for me to feel like this a little bit of self-doubt in terms of like, I mean, I know like I have to like, you know, sometimes we just got to take it like one day at a time. But like, I just don't want to get far ahead of myself and get myself worked up. Is there like a way that's normal or how to you, deal with it? Absolutely. You don't want to get too far ahead of yourself. If I were to show you code right now that we're going to write in unit three, you'd look at it like it was gibberish because you have no idea what it is. We, yeah. The way that we've organized the content in this course, we're going to slowly get your feet wet. We'll break you into the, the basics. And once we have the foundations done, we'll get some re repetition with the foundations. Then we'll make it a little bit harder. We'll introduce new concepts. We'll apply those things differently. The, the way that we have our curriculum set up is it's designed specifically for people that have never done this before. So if you're feeling that way now, yeah. I mean, if you right now, I told you, you're going to be writing a tic-tac-toe game uh, next week. Like that sound probably sounds terrifying. Like you're going to be able to interact with something in the browser and like it, that would probably terrify most of you, but you'll be ready to do it then. And that will be a challenging exercise for most of you. Uh, but it's, I cannot say enough how much time and energy that uh, we've put into designing this curriculum and making it the best possible experience for uh, intro new software engineers. So, Thank you. I'll also say like, as you're getting your feet wet and the stuff as well, there will be some stuff that you absolutely love. And then there will be other stuff that you're kind of like, I don't really like this and I don't really get it in like kind of whatever feelings towards it. Um, and that's super normal as a software engineer to like not like something or to like something. Um, and that's kind of stuff that you should tap into and note as you go through this course is like, hey, I kind of liked this thing that we did today or wow, I never want to do this thing ever again. Um, that's, you know, you kind of discovering yourself and how you operate as a software engineer. So uh, kind of keep that stuff in mind too. You'll see that too, evidence in your instructors. Like I hate CSS. There, I said it. It's, it's out in the open. I despise, I loathe having to come up with styling for things that I design. Uh, David loves it, which is why we work really well together. Your IAs are all awesome at styling things too. So um, it's some things you're going to enjoy, some things you're not, but you need to know how to do everything. Good question. Rachel? Hi, I'm just um, missing some of the channels from my Slack as well. I just have the one where we all introduced ourselves. It looks like you have, let me, let me see. We can get you fixed on that. It looks like we may have added the wrong Rachel to that channel. So okay. somebody will get on top of that. That other Rachel's probably very confused as to why she's <laughs> getting messages. So 
Cool. Okay, thanks, thank for, you. thanks for letting us know that. Anybody else have any questions? Michael. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I might be jumping the gun here, but I noticed that it says um, there's a deliverable today that said add your GitHub username and OS to the appropriate Slack thread. Mm -hmm. and we'll I'm talk just about curious. that. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. I yeah, we're going to do that here in just a minute. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, just to give you a kind of a rundown, I know we haven't really talked about, I don't know how we haven't talked about this. We must have been missing a slide or something. Um, the syllabus for the course, uh, we can kind of walk you through exactly what we're going to be doing here while you're here. Uh, oh, did that get taken down? Do we not have a syllabus? Oh, here. I'll show you an old syllabus because it's going to be the same stuff. David hates when I go off script like this. It's awesome. Uh, where is that? That's going to be in archive. And I think it was this one. There we go. So this is kind of a. Um, rough and we'll I'll get this added to um, to your guys's notion too because there are going to be a couple different uh, changes to this but the first unit is going to be the fundamentals we're going to teach you HTML CSS how to manipulate items in the Dom uh, events how to make a browser app um, we'll talk more specific stuff about styling a little bit further on um, and you're going to build you're not going to build a uh, third party API, you're going to be building a portfolio for your unit one project. Um, and then the next unit, we're going to be talking about building a server, we're going to talk about how to uh, essentially accept incoming HTTP requests and then do something with it. So we're going to be writing server code that handles incoming requests to do different things. Uh, and you'll be building a what's called a CRUD application using the men stack. I know those are all weird acronyms you haven't heard yet. But uh, you're essentially going to be building an application where you can create, read, update, and delete data uh, that's being stored in a database in the cloud. And your app will be able to interface with that database and create, read, update, and delete resources and provide a meaningful user interaction to be able to do that. Um, unit three, kind of the same deal, only with React. Instead of using templating engines, you're going to be using React to do that, and React is the new hotness. Most of you will end up with React jobs after this course, so that's why we spend a whole lot of time talking about it. Uh, and then Unit 4 is going to be our second language. We're going to be learning Python, and we're going to be using, again, React combined with Django to build another web application that does the same thing as um, the other two apps. Uh, again, this is an old syllabus, so this is, this is not fully accurate. Um, your group project is actually going to be your React project. So. That's kind of a rough overview as to what the um, the course looks like. Any other questions? Chris. Is it common for people to get jobs in machine learning what, what, since we're learning Python after the course? Uh, you won't know enough about machine learning after this course we don't we don't touch that at all in this program so this is more of a web development software okay. engineering course we don't really touch on machine learning at all okay cool. any other questions savvy so are there um two group projects and then two individual Unit three will be your only group project. Okay. 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 Brian? Yeah, so I wanted to know if you wanted to get into machine learning or like cloud, cloud computing, is this a good jump off point? Is this a good starting point? Or is this something that's completely different that has nothing related to do with this course? Um, I mean, if you're wanting to build web applications that focus on machine learning, this is a good foundational course. If you want to get straight into machine learning and stuff like that, this is probably not the right course. Okay. So I would look at either the data analytics or um, like we, we have GA has programs that are designed for that. Um, but this is definitely not that this is how to build 
web applications, essentially. Right. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any questions? Anybody? Cool. Okay. Well, I'm going to hand the mic back over to David. Oh, Landry, what you got? You're muted. Sorry about that. So I was saying that um, we all did the uh, pre-work uh, prior mm -hmm. to start the start date today. And uh, since you were talking about CSS, uh, HTML and all that, all them things, once we get into it, are you going to start from where we left off uh, when we did the pre-work? Are you just gonna repeat all the basic of, uh, fundamentals that we learned during the pre-work? We're gonna review all that stuff. Okay. Yep. That was meant just as kind of a warm up to get your feet wet. Okay. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna discuss all that stuff. All we right, actually even you. have a day scheduled in Notion where we talk about your pre work. So we have a little walkthrough that goes you through the solution to the exercise that you completed in the pre work. This is a really good thing that our TAs wrote or IAs wrote last cohort. So good question. Anybody else? Eric. We cannot hear you. Can't hear you. Nope. If you go to your microphone settings, there should be a little arrow next to the mute button. If you, if you click on that, uh, you should be able to set your microphone there. There we go. Okay. Okay. Cool. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, regarding the pre-work, um, is that going to be graded by any chance? Or nope. all, right, all right, cool. Because I'm pretty sure I messed that one up. <laughs> I would imagine that most people in the room feel the same way. See everybody nodding. Yeah, pre-work was tough. A lot of the concepts in the pre-work were really tough. So we're going to talk about all that stuff throughout throughout the course. Oh, okay. Well, I like the CSS, by the way. Awesome. You're going to have a great time chatting with David and Hunter and Ian. Any other questions? I just want to say thank you for not including me that. I mean, I'm not all over CSS. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you and I are in the same boat, Joe. It's okay. Anybody else have any questions? Happy to help, happy to answer them. You can always message us too, uh, if you have any other questions. Going once, going twice. Cool. All right, I'm going to pass the mic back to David. He's gonna have you do a Slack setup, have you, uh, and after that, we're gonna do our first thread response in Slack. It's gonna be so exciting. Uh, so David, floor is yours. All right, everyone. So we're going to make sure that everyone is set up appropriately in Slack. Uh, so what we're going to do is go ahead and oh, make sure you've got Slack open and you're going to click on your profile picture that is in the upper right-hand corner of Slack. Uh, once you have that open, go ahead and click on profile. It's there in the drop down. That will take you to a little profile sidebar that will pop open. I'll have some general information about you. And then once you're in here, what you're going to do is, uh, Ben, if you could go to the next slide. Uh, go ahead and click on edit profile. It's a little pencil button about halfway down the page after your photo and uh, your uh your uh, name and all that, all that information there. You're going to click on that edit profile button. I'll take you to a wonderful page where you're going to be able to change your uh, profile info. 
So in here, what we're going to request from you is that you have your, uh, your preferred name. So whatever you introduced yourself as uh, this morning, uh, that is kind of what we want to be using everywhere throughout uh, wherever we see your name. So that's kind of what we want to have in Zoom. That's what we want to have in Slack. That's what we want to have everywhere where we see you so that it's consistent because uh, there's, you know, we want to make sure that we're calling you the same thing across all of these different platforms that we use. So uh, make sure that you've uh, changed your uh, full name and your display name to both be the same thing in here. So you should have your preferred name there, first and last name, and then also your pronouns. Uh, and then also uh, go and add in your, uh, your metro area. So whatever kind of major hub is around you, that would be uh, ideal. Uh, again, this is useful because we've got people uh, like in this engineering channel, uh, all of these past students that we've had uh, that are going to be able to potentially provide for you uh, networking support. And we want to be able to kind of, you know, see where you're from so that like, someone else can come in really quickly and see like, hey, this person is from this area. Uh, maybe we can like network a little bit more, maybe we can get a coffee and chat about, you know, software engineering and work and all that kind of stuff. Um, it, you know, that's a really, really powerful networking tool that you should absolutely utilize while you're here. So that's why we're having you include your networking or your uh, metro area here is for that networking. Uh, also, again, pronouns just so that we can quickly come in and kind of, you know, it's good to see who you're talking to and what they would like to be referred to as. So uh, please make sure you're including that as well, uh, again, and your preferred name. Uh, don't forget, after you've done that, click on Save Changes. Also, a big part of this is uh, this photo too. Uh, make sure that you're the person that is in this photo. So like no group photos or stuff like that. Um, make sure that you're being appropriate in the photo that you upload. Uh, don't know, shouldn't even need to say that, but hey, be appropriate. Um, all right. So uh, while I'm on that topic, I guess, um, again, our, you know, this is a somewhat professional environment. Um, you know, we'll post gifts here and stuff like that. But for the most part, uh, make sure that, you know, you're behaving as you would in a professional environment. I don't want to have conversations with anyone here about how to you know, interact with other people in a works environment. So please uh, don't make me have to do that conversation. Um, let's see, uh, Landry, you had a question. Yes, um, I don't see a place on my stack where I can change my metro area. I see everything else you said. But yeah. Then, so, so you're just, there's not a specific place for it. You're just going oh. to, yeah, reference that uh, photo that Ben is circling there at the bottom. Just kind of okay. add it in to the end. So like, you know, if there's an abbreviation for your metro area, that's cool. If you need to like spell out, like, uh, you, you know, you live in Austin or whatever, that's totally cool too. Um, yeah. What about the power? He says, what I do, he says, let people know what you do at GE immersive students. Uh, you don't need to do anything there. Okay. Cool. Very good. Again, make sure you've hit save changes after you've done all of that work. And you already have the post typed up for the next thing. Uh, I do not. I do. So let me know oh. when you're ready for that. Fantastic. All right, so after you've done that, uh, Ben, if you would like to say what is in this post and what people should be replying with. All right, before we do this, um, there's I'm gonna move my Slack over here and I'm gonna show you a couple things. Uh, by the way, if y'all think you have a lot of channels, you should see what your instructors have. It's wild. So um, what we want you to do is as a reply to this thread, we want you to post your personal GitHub username, not GitHub Enterprise. We will not be using GitHub Enterprise in this course. We will not be using GitHub Enterprise during this course. Um, I know they may have had you sign up for a GitHub Enterprise. You want a personal GitHub account. We need the username for that. 
along with the operating system that you're currently using to take the course as a reply in the thread. So you're going to be replying to things in order to keep you know, posts in Slack nice, neat, and concise, we're gonna use reply threads. So you'll notice here when I hover over this that it says reply and thread. So I'm gonna click that button and it opens up this little dual window, right? So here I'm able to write a reply to this post. Right now, let's say I just said derpy derp, right? When I post that, it shows up here. I don't want it to say derp, derpy derp, so I'm gonna delete that post. So I'm gonna hit delete. But this is how you do that. So what I want you to do is in a single message, just like Michael's done here, I want you to show us what your username is for your GitHub, personal GitHub, and your operating system. Just to clarify what Ben means by personal GitHub, that is github.com, the username attached to that account. And put them in the same message because we, I, I don't want to have to sort through uh, 110 messages. I just want to have to sort through 55. And if you need to edit a message, you can do this. So let's say I typed uh, manliest Ben and I forgot to put my operating system. So I, oh, ah, I can click on manliest Ben. I can hit edit and I can add Windows 11 to that, like that. So Brian, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you put that here as a reply, not as a separate message. Okay, Landry, do you still have a question? Yes, I was just saying, you said the GitHub uh, uh, username should be the one for our private account, not the one that uh, GA had us uh, sign up for? No, just like I put in the post here, you're gonna to wanna to use your personal GitHub, not GitHub Enterprise. We're not okay. gonna be using GitHub Enterprise during the course. Okay. Kathy? Um, I thought that there was like a shortcut. Um, when you hit enter, it doesn't give you a new line included shift. in one. shift. Okay. Shift enter. Okay. Okay. So Abu Bakr, you're gonna wanna make sure that you post here as a reply instead of its own separate message. And you can go ahead and delete that message, Abu Bakr. Brian? I don't think I'm seeing the classroom thread on mine. Am I in it? It's because you're not here. Well, it says you're, somebody added you, so you should be there now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not, I don't have classroom either. Okay. Uh, it looks like you're in here. So to see that off to the left, you should be able to see SEIR 523 classroom. Do you see that one? Yes, I'm in now. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, looks like we're doing pretty well. Okay, uh, Jamie and John, make sure you put those in here as a reply instead of in their own separate posts. I'm just going to delete those two. Uh, the rest of these are looking good. Um, those of you that put Mac OS, if you could let us know what version of Mac OS you're running, that would be Splendiferous. Cool, cool, cool. Looking good. Cool. Um, Eric, are you using uh, which version of Ubuntu are you using? 
Um, I believe it's um twenty oh um oh one. Okay, let me just double check that. Okay. Do you have anybody else using Linux? Rob, make uh, sure you put your uh, operating system in there. What was that, Eric? Oh uh, no, it, it, I was actually wrong. It's um twenty-two point point oh four. Beautiful. Do we just have the one Linux user? That's exciting. No, there's another one. Two Linux users. Three. Four. That's exciting. Zach, we may want to get you on 22 since that's LTS right now. So we'll chat about that. Is 20 going to be 20s, okay, David? 20 is fine. Yep. Okay, fine. Fifty-five replies, doing well. Is anybody having problems with this? Anybody need any hand? I know this may seem like easy potatoes for some of you, but this first week is going to be a lot of like really we're taking everything slow because everybody is coming in at a different pace. So um, that's just kind of another thing. It, some of you people with previous experience, like the first week or two, might seem like we just kind of have our foot on the brakes um, and that's a normal feeling. So if you feel that way, do the level up content, get some practice exercises in. Um, you know, if you really feel like you're not being challenged enough, let us know. We'll definitely find a way to challenge you. Okay, Francisco, make sure you put your um, GitHub username in there. And Alexandria, go ahead and make sure you put this in the thread. Savvy? Um, it's not too much of a question. I just kind of wanted to add a comment. Oh, to uh, let me take my down to what you just said. Um, from a little bit of experience, especially when you're getting set up between GitHub and Enterprise and using, even just trying to figure out VS Code versus Atom or just trying to figure out what terms you want to use, I do appreciate taking this little like this because it saves a lot of time down the line. Because a lot of times you aren't going to be able to even kind of check your codes or even really do any of the labs or assignments or whatever it is, because mm -hmm. you're going to be backtracking if it's even set up. And I, is, I've learned that yeah. from experience, hence be searching in the back. 1,000% <laughs> so true. It's definitely appreciated. Cool. Anybody else need a hand with this? Awesome. Uh, David, did you have anything else for them or? No, I do not. Okay. So we are going to take a break uh, for lunch. Lunch is going to be an hour. Well, you get an extra 11 minutes today. Uh, the instructors are going to stick around until 11 o'clock central. So we'll be here for the next 11 minutes if anyone does have any questions or need help with anything. Um, but please be back in uh, one hour and now 10 minutes. Uh, and we're going to start our first lecture. So be good times. So see you all in a little over an hour.